Welcome to Movie Shortens. We are back again to explain to you a 2011 science fiction romantic drama film called Perfect Sense. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care! Susan, an epidemiologist, has a less successful personal life compared to her profession. She has just ended a relationship with her boyfriend. Susan and her sister throw the rocks to erase the anger and sadness away. After that, Susan decides to get back to work and forget about what happened. Meanwhile, Michael, a talented chef at a busy restaurant, has quite a wasted lifestyle. After a one-night stand with a strange woman, Michael usually asks them to leave so he can sleep alone. The following day, Susan arrives at work. Her colleague, Stefan, requires Susan to join an investigation of a newly released hospital patient. According to his wife, he was so emotional and burst into tears. Then he said that he found life meaningless and suddenly he couldn't smell anymore. While working with the patient, Susan finds this case has nothing to relate to her job. However, Stefan tells Susan that more similar cases are reported around Europe in 24 hours. All the cases have no infection, nor no connection to each other. Therefore, Stefan and Susan agree the smell loss could go away, so there is no need to panic or report to the public in general. Meanwhile, in a fancy busy restaurant, Michael is spinning around with the orders. He has a great sense of smell that just by smelling a fish, he can tell if it is fresh. After that, he takes a rest outside the restaurant. At that moment, Susan is also smoking in her apartment nearby. Michael asks Susan if he can have a spare cigarette. Michael, as usual, starts to hit on Susan, but she has no interest in him. She closes the window as Michael asks for her name. Several days later, Susan and the team still work on a strange syndrome. They conclude that it is not contagious, but it is spreading. To Susan, it could be environmental, mysterious toxin, or even terrorism. In a short time, no one knows exactly what it is, but more and more cases are reported all over the world. They don't have time to give the disease a name. People get so emotional over things. They think of all the people that they have hurt. Even babies are overwhelmed in sadness. Then they encounter a losing sense of smell. Susan and her team work so hard to find out the cure for the strange syndrome. At the same time, Michael notices fewer people on the streets. They start to wear masks even though it is not contagious. Some of Susan's co-workers start to get the disease. Since people lose their sense of smell, Michael's restaurant faces a drop in customers. The kitchen becomes unbelievably quiet. In the end, the world has named it Severe Olfactory Syndrome, or SOS. While Michael smokes, he runs into Susan again. Michael invites Susan to the restaurant and he cooks for her in the kitchen. Susan is impressed by his dish. She even enjoys the food with her fingers, and not to forget complimenting Michael about the amazing fish. While Michael makes Susan some sweets, Susan suddenly cries. She says that she misses her father and the food Michael made reminds her of him. Michael is confused but he tries to comfort Susan. After that, he walks her home. Susan can't stop grieving, so Michael has to stay by her. While consoling Susan, Michael begins to shed tears. The two hug each other to overcome the sorrow. The next morning, Michael wakes up in a better mood. When the two are in the kitchen, Susan informs him that she has lost the smell. Michael tests a cup of tea and realizes his smell is gone too. At work, Susan becomes emotionally invested in a disease after she knew that she lost the smell. Likewise, Michael has to think of solutions to cook for his customer whose sense of smell is gone. He starts to add more spices and flavors to stimulate the taste. The two quickly cope with the syndrome and get used to it. As people lose the smell, the memory also fades because smell and the human brain are connected. Without the smell, an ocean of the past will disappear. One morning, Michael whistles to draw Susan's attention from the window. The two get closer. They go for a walk and talk about their career. Susan and Michael quickly have chemistry. They make love and try to feel the smell of each other. When Michael shares to Susan that he used to like sleeping alone, Susan tends to be cautious due to her last relationship. She asks Michael to leave after that. The two then keep thinking about each other but none of them has a chance to reveal what they think. The world has turned into chaos due to the mysterious disease. As science can't think of a cure, people tend to blame each other. Some think it was due to the biochemistry war plans. Some blame it on terrorists, or religious conspiracy, or simply God's punishments, even UFO attacks. After a while, people become traumatized and delusive for no reason. At work, Stefan becomes aggressive. Susan and another guy have to inject him with a calming medicine. Same syndromes happen to Susan in the parking lab. At the restaurant, Michael also loses his temper. Gradually, people become incredibly hungry. They eat almost everything, from flowers, 
raw fish, lab animals, raw meat, even toothpaste and lipstick. After intaking everything they can, people will awake being shocked and disgusted at what they just put in their mouth. When the hunger is over, people begin to lose their sense of taste. Susan appears in front of Michael's house, and the two confront each other for the terrible loose they have been through. Michael and Susan both understand the value of love and the remaining sensation they still own. The two slowly get closer together. The next day, Michael and Susan accept the truth that they have to forget about the taste, loss, and keep moving. All around the world, people get back to work. Life continues to go on. After that, Michael shows up at the restaurant. He works really hard to create new recipes and menus that fit with the taste loss syndrome. Michael takes advantage of the sense of touch and hearing in cooking. As a result, the restaurant begins to welcome customers again. People start to write a diary about all daily events. Some read aloud for others. Meanwhile, Susan and Michael develop a strong relationship. They mostly spend time together. Susan shares about the ovary problem which prevents her from having a baby in the future. Michael also reveals his past when he abandoned his girlfriend, who had cancer, and let her die alone. Michael is so obsessed that he can't even sleep well with any girl until Susan appears in his life. The two now know everything about each other and become more tolerant. After a while, a new issue first takes place in Bangkok, Thailand. People throw in tantrums, become angry and tempered for no reason. It also spreads around the world quicker than anyone can expect, turning the world into chaos. After that, people lose their sense of hearing. Hatred, anger, and violence bring the world into danger. It is called Severe Hearing Loss Syndrome, or SHL. As the world becomes deeply concerned about the new syndrome, they conduct quarantine everywhere. The restaurant where Michael works is isolated and required to become the food supply for the whole building during the lockdown. Susan has to move in with Michael because her apartment is in quarantine zone. Suddenly, Michael becomes tempered and starts scolding Susan. He throws everything in the house and insults Susan in the worst language, which he has never said to her before. In panic, Susan has to leave Michael's house. She drives off to work while everyone in town also becomes violent and aggressive. Meanwhile, after the trauma, Michael faces hearing loss. The CDC also arrives at his house as they will isolate those who suffer from spontaneous death. After that, Susan receives a call from Michael. However, Susan doesn't want to talk to him and becomes madly angry. Everyone is truly in a state of shock and despair. Susan also experiences hearing loss after the rage. Over time, people learn how to communicate with signals and gestures. Some write to each other. Some people become bad as robbery and bullying happen regularly on the streets. Some stay still to wait for the end of the world. Others choose to cope with the disease to move on. Michael and his staff set up the restaurant again and reopen the business. He cooks the food that is more eye-catching and colorful to attract more customers. Meanwhile, Susan decides to forget about Michael and gets back to her profession. People gradually realize they have to learn for the worst to happen. They practice walking their eyes folded. Some read more books and try to memorize the good things. Michael still loves Susan as he passes by her apartment every day, hoping that he can meet Susan again to say sorry. After that, the world faces a sudden temperature drop. Ice Age appears everywhere, gradually killing living creatures on Earth. One morning, Michael wakes up feeling overwhelmed in love and happiness. Everyone starts caring and loving each other. Smiles and happiness spread throughout the world. They share a strong attachment to each other to offer warming, to understand, and to forgive. Susan and Michael are no exception. They rush to see each other. Susan drives to Michael's restaurants while Michael arrives at her apartment. The two find each other at the end. Just as they embrace, the two and the rest of the world become blind. Subscribe to watch more videos like this and don't forget to turn on your notification. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.